Hey guys, welcome to Robo Circuits. This is your host Prashant and you are watching part 2 of the Home Assistant series. In the previous part, we looked at what are the parts required to start a Home Assistant server at our home. In this part, we will look at how to install Home Assistant onto the SSD, then we will connect the SSD to the Raspberry Pi, and finally we will configure our Raspberry Pi to run Home Assistant. Then. We in the mid of the video, we will also check why we need a SD card. So this video is going to be too interesting. Let's get started. So the first part is burning home assistant onto the SSD. For that, we need to go to our computer screens and install Raspberry Pi image. So let's do that. So first of all, we have to search for Raspberry Pi image. Then using the first link, we can download the Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows, Mac OS or Ubuntu. So currently I am using Mac OS, so I will download the Raspberry Pi Imager for Mac OS. Once downloaded, we can now run it. So first of all, we have to install the Raspberry Pi Imager into our system. So once, once installed, now we can run it. Now you can see the Raspberry Pi Imager is working. Now first of all, we have to choose the operating system. Click on choose operating system. Now go to other specific purpose OS. Now select home assistant and home automation. Now select home assistant. And now we have three options. The first one is for Raspberry Pi 4. The second one is for Raspberry Pi 3. And the third one is for yellow. This is a home assistant yellow kit. So now we are going to select for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now we have to choose storage. Before choosing storage, we have to plug in the SSD into our system. So let's first plug in the SSD into our system. Now we can select our SSD which is Cablet USB 3.0 Media 128GB. Then just by clicking on write, the Raspberry Pi Imager will download the Home Assistant and now write it on the SSD. Click on write. It will ask, it will give a warning that all the data on the SSD will be cleared. Just click on yes. Now enter your password and the writing process will start soon. So now you can see the writing process has been started. We have to wait for a few minutes and then we can continue on working on the home assistant. So now you can see the home assistant has been written successfully on the solid state drive. But there is a little problem. The Raspberry Pi is by default set to boot from the SD card. So first of all, we have to configure the Raspberry Pi to boot from not from the SD card, but from the USB port where we are going to install our SSD. So now first of all, we have to plug the SD card into the computer. Then in the operating system, we have to go back now in the operating system, we have to select miscellaneous utility images. In this one, we have to select bootloader. And now there are a lot of options. The first one is SD card boot means this bootloader image will allow the Raspberry Pi to boot from the SD card, but we don't want it. We want to boot it from USB boot. So click on USB boot. Now click on the SD card which you have selected. Uh, so this one is USB storage media 32 GB. I will select it and click on write. Again it will give a warning because it will it is going to remove everything from the SD card. Click on yes. Enter the password. So now we have a bootloader image on our SD card which will 
reconfigure the Raspberry Pi to boot from the USB port, not from the not from the SD card. So wait for it to write and then we can plug this SD card directly into the Raspberry Pi. Then its boot loader will change. After that, we will be able to boot our Raspberry Pi directly from the SSD or the USB port where we are going to plug our SSD. So I think everything is almost ready for now. So as you can see, the write has been done. Click on continue. Now take out the SD card. Before going forward in this video, let's see who is the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by the most advanced industry level electronic design automation software for printed circuit boards, LTM Designer. With LTM Designer comes Octopart, a powerful search engine that makes it fast and easy to compare millions of components, find important technical details, make component selection decision easy, and order components from the distributors. Octopart combines easily with LTM Designer to make your PCB designing journey smooth. If you go to the link in the description, you will get a free trial of LTM Designer with LTM365 and 25% off on your purchase. So now, first of all, we have to upload the new bootloader onto the Raspberry Pi. For that, we will take our SD card in which we have burned the bootloader. We will insert the SD card into our Raspberry Pi like this. Then we will connect the power adapter onto the Raspberry Pi and we will power it. Now you can see the Raspberry Pi is running. In just few seconds, it will install the new bootloader. Now we can turn the Raspberry Pi off and now we can unplug the Raspberry Pi, remove the SD card and now we can insert the SSD in the Raspberry Pi. And finally we can run it again but this time we have to connect it to our Wi-Fi router because now the home assistant is going to start. So for that we will need an Ethernet cable. So now let's go to the Wi-Fi router and connect the Raspberry Pi with the Ethernet cable. So here we have our Wi-Fi router. I will place my Raspberry Pi or my home assistant near the router. Then we will take an Ethernet cable something like this. Let's unwrap it first. Now, one end of this cable will go into the router port. You can see there are a lot of LAN ports. Just install it in any one of it. Like this. Now, the other end will go into the Ethernet port of our, of our Raspberry Pi. Something like this. Now we can place our Raspberry Pi near the router, something like that. And I think it's done. Now we just have to give power to our Raspberry Pi. Now I'm plugging the power adapter of the Raspberry Pi. And let's turn it on. So our Raspberry Pi started running. Now we have to wait for 15 to 20 minutes in the meantime, Raspberry Pi will configure the home assistant. Then we will be able to connect it through our laptop. So let's wait for a few moments and go to our computer screens to check out how home assistant is going to run. So now we are in our computer screens. So we have to go to an address home assistant dot local underscore 8123 now click on it so
So first of all, you have to make sure that you are connected with the same Wi-Fi as the Home Assistant. Now you can see here we are seeing preparing Home Assistant. That means we have successfully connected our Raspberry Pi to our router and it is showing in our computer screens. So this is saying it can take up to 20 minutes. So we need to wait for a while. Let's come after 20 minutes and see what happens. Raspberry Pi is, has completed configuring its Home Assistant. So first of all, we have to give a name to our Home Assistant. So what name we can give? So I am giving it my home. So username will be my home. I can change the username. But currently I am going with this. Then we have to enter a password. Currently I am giving it home at the rate 2023. I will change it later. So don't worry. Then we can click on create an account. So now we have to give a location. Uh, it can automatically detect it also. But I think it is detecting the wrong location. I am currently not in Cathal, but somewhere else. But let's go with it. Then we can click on next. So now we can uh, choose what kind of diagnostic or log data we want. Then click on next. Currently a Bluetooth device is detected, which is Raspberry Pi's internal Bluetooth. And more devices will also be detected. And finally, we can click on finish to finish the home assistant. So once finished, it will give us a login screen. We have to enter our ID. Then we have to, then we have to enter our password and click on login. Oh, sorry, there is no space in the username. So this is how our home assistant will look like. So first of all, we have the dashboard, then we have the energy monitoring, the map, the logbooks, the history, the media, then some developer tools, then some settings, notifications, and finally our user profile. So in the next video, we will take a look at each one of them. Then we will make a device using ESP that will connect to our home assistant. Then we will check to add more smart devices to our system. Like I have a smart monitor in this, in this room. So in the next video, we will check how we can configure a lot of smart devices from other companies as well as how we can make our own smart home devices through ESP and ESP Home. Then we will look at the Zigbee part of the system in the next part. And in this way, this whole Home Assistant series will go on by adding more and more features to your Home Assistant. So now this part is done. See you in the next part. If you like this video, then hit the like button. If you want to see more of the content like this, then go to our channel RoboCircuits and do subscribe it. So thank you for watching. Have a nice day.